Well, thanks guys for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already and be sure to click the bell so you'll get notifications for the follow-up videos and uh, give me a like and share with a friend. Thank you so much. Let's get started. Hello everybody. It is a beautiful day today and uh, we've started working on the flying saucer, which is another video, but uh, I'm having to uh, do something uh, that's come up, a project, uh, and um, I thought this is interesting enough to record. So uh, I hope you enjoy this. Uh, when I was a kid, these traveling carnivals would come to town, you know, the rides and all that stuff and the cotton candy. Well, uh, I remember that there used to be these little booths where they would do spin art. They'd put a piece of card you know, white paper card on a, a, a little rotisserie thing and it would spin real fast and they'd hand you these little bottles of paint with little thin nozzles and you'd just drip it over the paper as it was spinning and it would And when I was a kid, I thought that was fascinating. I mean, I was like, oh man, I'm gonna do this all day long. And you know, it's pretty cheap and everybody knows what it is, but I just had an idea. Um, and I, I sold it to a guy. And uh, so we're going to do some spin art on glass. So anyway, we're going to uh, make a turntable. And I'm going to use my lap wheel, which we usually grind and polish glass on. But that's a turntable, and it spins mighty quickly. So we're going to do it on that. So I've got to make a little uh, adapter platform to, to set it on. And then uh, the glass will have to be small enough to fit within that 24-inch uh, diameter. And uh, so anyway, I got a feeling it's going to be real cool. I don't know what the final result will be. I don't know if it'll be like, oh, that's cute, and that's it. Or if it'll be like, wow, hey, something new. But we'll find out together. So anyway, I'm going to get started on the platform adapter uh, with which to do this. All right, we're getting started. First, I bought this from the hardware store. It's a two-foot square. We have a two-foot diameter on the, the wheel over there, so that'll fit nicely. So first, I've got to find my center. So that's dead center. Make a little impression here. I love this tool. I found this years ago in the hardware store. And there's no end to the uses I have found for it. So anyway, so our wheel over there is 24 and the darn hardware store actually cut this thing a little shy, about 3 sixteenths shy. So I'm going to mark this accordingly. Tighten that up, then we trace our diameter. And there we go. And I'm going to go double check how much clearance we have on this. So I'd better not come out more than a half inch. Let's see, it's half inch plus one and a half, half inch, one and a half, there we go. So now I've got to loosen this up again. Okay. 
now this is where we're going to actually cut the wood off along this line I'm marking right now. much work. Okay, set that aside. Okay, now we're going to drill some holes in this thing. Uh, I'm going to insert dowels in there and that will allow us to place our, our disc onto the lap wheel. So let's just keep drilling holes here. to do so this won't take very long at all interesting story I found this behemoth of a drill press in a garage sale no one else was there you know no other customers and I'm standing there looking at that drill press drooling and uh, I, I asked the guy, I said, how much? He goes, well, how much are you willing to spend? And I said, no, no, sir, I, I don't really have much money with me. I don't want to insult you. And he goes, well, how much do you have to spend? And I said, all I have is $30. And he said, I'll take it. So I've got this. I have no idea what this thing cost. Had to have been like $4,000, $5,000 new. Weighs a ton. But holy cow, is it powerful? It'll drill through anything. But anyway, now we're just drilling through lousy old plywood. But I still have a deep appreciation for my $30 drill press. Last hole. Now that we've got our holes, we'll go to the saw and cut off these corners. Okay, let's see if I've got enough room. Well, I already see one problem. Let me get rid of this guy. Last one. 
Okay. So now we've got this is the diameter of the wheel. These little posts will stick through, and uh, that will give me something to lock onto the metal wheel so it'll stay positioned, stay centered. Because something this heavy going around that fast, you don't want it to be very much out of balance. Okay, now we're going to cut our little one and one eighth inch dowels to length. Need a dozen of them. half of them. One more to do. And there we go. So now we got a dozen of these little guys. Here. Alrighty. Alrighty, now we're going to take some wood glue. And I always like to use the Tight Bond waterproof stuff just never know when something's going to get wet unexpectedly and uh, well come on I started using tight bond when I heard some years ago that they were using them to build guitars with and I thought good enough for guitar it's good enough for my project so we just get that surface lined and then get that wet with glue, set it in there. sure they're flush with the other side. Alrighty, so that takes care of that. Now we've got these little pegs here so that when I flip it over and set it on the, the lap wheel, it can't slide off. Now I'm going to go test that and make sure that that's right. Alrighty, so here we are on the lap wheel. And this is our little turntable that we made. So we'll set it on here. Now I'm going to start it up, but uh, I tell you, this isn't to be taken lightly when you start spinning something that's essentially not attached. It's just sitting there, kind of caught on the edges. But there's no real capture, so let's just see what happens here. freaking me out. See, it's not perfectly balanced, so we're getting a little vibration here, a little wobble. But look at that thing go. Now, we're going to be doing this soon with a piece of glass on there, just sitting there. Now, it'll be captured along the edges, but holy cow. Turn it off and let it slow down. Now, the real trick is going to be, will it want to stay in place? Because if it jumps, let me tell you, it's going to 
gonna do some damage. I was working on a piece one time, a piece of glass, and every once in a while, when you're working on these discs, you can just instantly get a, a, a vacuum where it kind of sticks. <clears throat> and that happened, and it took it out of my hand, went around once, I was fixing to dive onto the floor, and it threw that thing loose, and I tell you, that thing went all the way up to, let me get it in camera there, up to that rafter, or I don't know what to call that, but I mean, there's still glass up in there right now. I didn't go, I didn't go dig it out, but holy cow. The thing about tools is they're faster than you and they're stronger than you. So you've got to be smart. That's why we have safety equipment helmets, goggles, gloves, etc. And sometimes that just protects you for like half a second, if that much. And, uh, you know, and have certain policies about how to use certain tools. But I'm sticking my neck out here for a, a worthy experiment. And we'll see how that goes. The glass that I've ordered to do on this will show up sometime next week it's saturday now it'll be here i would guess by the end of the week but um i, I ordered a 14 by 18 and i have that that drawn out right here just so i have some idea and uh, so i'll put some stops or some uh, screws or something up against the glass so it can't move but when the glass goes on it'll be a little bit more out of balance and so when we get that the accumulative out of balance of this disc plus the glass itself it's gonna this will wobble we might be able to see on camera this thing i even had a tool one time that was wobbling out of balance and it started walking through the wall while i was gone in my office i came back and this thing has knocked through the sheet walk and was walking through the wall who knows how far it would have gotten if I hadn't showed up when I did. But anyway, that's it. That's going to be our uh, glass spin art platform. And uh, can't wait to see how that goes. All right. Well, my glass came in uh, that we're going to do the painting on, the spin painting. And uh, this is a piece of 3 16 inch. It's not that thick. I could have used quarter. But... Uh, I've got a, a, a polished edge, a chamfered edge on it, so it's finished out. So anyway, we're going to clean this off. And I'm going to put a piece of vinyl on it to protect it from being scratched. And uh, besides it protecting the uh, front of the glass <clears throat> it will also provide a white background to let me see what my paint is doing so that's a convenience so anyway just get that clean oh where'd my vinyl go I'll be right back okay I've got a piece of vinyl here <clears throat> we're gonna Put this on. It's kind of tricky to get this on without wrinkling it. So now I need to squeegee the bubbles out, if they'll come out, those bubbles will actually lift us up <clears throat> off the uh, platform and we don't want that really. Okay, 
Okay, so now we've got uh, the glass with the vinyl on it, and I've already got the location marked out, so it's, you know, reasonably centered. Alrighty. You know, one thing I really don't like is when I'm focusing on the work, and then I'm working on the work, all you see is this, this, this thing right here, you know? Okay, well anyway, uh, what I've got here is I've got these uh, little metal collars, I guess they're aluminum, and then I've got a, uh, a, a little clear hose, plastic hose, cut to length and snapped around it, and so we can push up against this. You don't want to push metal against glass, but here we've got, uh, we've got the, ooh, is that right? Yeah, okay, that's right. Here we've got the, the plastic, and so we're going to screw this down. And that'll catch. And so we're just going to do two on the long side, maybe one on the short, maybe two on the long. Not real sure yet. The thing is, as this thing starts spinning, it's gonna be scary. Not scary for you, but scary for me because I have seen stuff come off of this wheel before. And let me tell you, each time I was surprised that I wasn't injured in some way. So, now that those two are in place, I'm going to turn this around. And I'm going to put a little pressure on the next one as I screw it down. I'm going to actually be trying to push into that a little bit. It won't do much, but it'll do a little. something better to push here with. Okay. Now, this really isn't that much work. I'm just trying to create a little pressure. A slight pressure on the little plastic ring. So let's see. Yeah, there's a little pressure on that. It's not sliding. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. I think we're going to just do one here in the center. I'm going to put a slight pressure on here. I don't want to inadvertently slide it, but I'm going to put a, a little bit of pressure. This is going to be our virgin flight, and after this, this board is going to be a messy, messy mess, because it'll have paint on it that we will wipe off, but not actually clean off. This right here. I don't know if you can see past my hand as I'm doing this, but okay, now I'm pushing.
Okay, there we go. And the screws did not break through the bottom. That's good. Put these back here, unused. Okay. So now we've got our spinning platform and our glass attached, and it's ready to put on the wheel and spin that sucker. set our platform in place and that'll stay on there and you can see how that is going to spin and this thing is going to spin so fast with a piece of glass attached holy cow it's going to be interesting well, let me set some more stuff in place and we'll be ready to go okay now I put some plywood in here cut some pieces to fit raise this up a little bit this way if something does come loose it'll buy me maybe another second maybe a second you know of this more of this for it to bounce off of before it leaves leaves the box and uh, hopefully I won't be in the way if it does that so anyway this plywood gives me a little protection also protects the the machine and then we put some cardboard in here that's just so we don't have paint accumulating on the plywood so that that doesn't become messier and messier and harder to uh, harder to deal with and so we're ready to go so let's go look at our paints I've got to make some paint choices I don't have all the colors I'd like to have but uh, uh, I do have some colors enough to experiment and prove this concept and if this works well then we'll go buy some paints but the paints are very expensive and uh, you know like eighty dollars ninety dollars or more a quart so you don't want to really be throwing that away if you don't have to so let's go over there and look at our paint holy moly it is 98 degrees and we're not in the dead of summer yet and it's already 98 degrees man I usually scratch my head. How do Eskimos do it? I mean, how do they how do they live? Well, you know, you start getting above a hundred, and you start asking the same question. Uh, well, anyway, let's look at our paints. And uh, what I've got is a whole bunch of leftovers from various projects. And uh, <clears throat> and so I've got to come up with a color scheme from a very limited palette. So uh, we're going to pop the lids off and just look down. And some of these may not even be usable they, if they're not liquid enough. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me go grab uh, the opener and we'll start looking at these things. I hope that the fan that's running in the background doesn't dominate the audio. So we're just going to start popping these one at a time. Okay, that needs to be re-stirred. That's not, that one's gone. I can already tell it's hard. In the trash can. There's some lovely green, forest green, deep forest green. Let's stay with brighter colors for now. So this is kind of a peachy orange. That needs to be re-stirred, but I think we can get that going again. What is that? White. I've got a note on here that says it might be bad. I don't know if it means it's changed colors or if it was never actually white and I didn't realize it. Uh, I think that's usable. Oh, man. Now this, this looks bright yellow, but it's, it's more of an orange. Kind of a dull orange, too. But uh, until it gets mixed back up, 
we want to see its true color. Now this is a real pretty yellow. We, I don't know if I can uh, if I can avoid that. Let's see what is this? That's more white. This is another orange. Let's see if uh, see if we're good in orange. I think we can reconstitute that. Now there was something I was looking at. Now I can't remember what it was. That's the white, green, and green. Well, you know, that's a uh, that's baby blue. You wouldn't know it to look in the can. Okay, and that's a very cheerful brass green. Now, this is sort of an interesting red, kind of a violet or purple, I'm not really sure. Ooh, that's a nice color. Ooh, wouldn't these two look good together? Okay, I think we got something to work with. So, first we got to stir these up and then we can start pouring. Okay, we're gonna clean the glass one last time just to make sure our paint will stick, make sure no bugs laid any poops or anything on the glass while we weren't looking. Now, I don't think I'm gonna let this go up to full rotation. I mean, I'm just, frankly, very nervous about this whole thing but if it works once and then twice and then three times I'll start to believe in it so I'm gonna go get our paint wish I had a little table here let's see if I can arrange something yeah yeah I can okay one of the things that I'm gonna have to figure out by experimentation is because of the viscosity of this paint, how fast does this thing need to be turning to do what I want it to do? And the answer is, I won't know until I do it. So we're going to just take a chance. We'll start it up. And uh, I may talk over this thing. Hopefully you can hear me. Hold on. Hold on. I'm going to put on some face protection. This uh, apron here is rubber and it's not exactly thin. And then I got uh, the traditional face protection. I was going to wear a leather coat to do this, but it is so hot, I'm not going to do it. Okay, now let's start it up. Go ahead and get me some paint. Okay, I turn the machine off. What, it, what happened? It's not looking like what I expected. Okay, I think the likelihood is, is that we were actually going too fast. Because instead of the little fingers of paint radiating out from the center, Looks more like it's kind of blended. Come on, slow down. Slow down. Oh no, I got fingers. Oh, and they look pretty cool too. Hey, look at that. Pretty funky. We got little sprays of paint all the way around. 
start to get pain on here first time out okay that's fine for now so what we're going to do we're going to have to let this set for about an hour so i'm going to clean my cup cap my paint do something else and then we'll come back and go to the next color okay it's time for color numero dos it's kind of a pale orange so let's crank this up we're going to go slower this time. Okay, we're going to try it at that speed and see what happens. Kind of a little break. Okay, here we go. Afraid of getting a splinter. Okay. Well, that looks interesting. So we're going to let that set just a little bit. Uh, we'll do our next color. Okay, I've decided I'm not going to wait for this to dry. Call me impatient. Call me impetuous. Call me Shirley, but don't call me Collect. Alrighty. That's still sticky wet. Still wet, so let's get going. Here we got the brighter orange. Oh, yes. That's lovely. And I'm real happy to see we don't have to operate this at full speed. Still didn't come up with a break idea for this. Come on. Come on. There we go. Okay, I can see that it's going to take a little practice to get technique. But all I care about right now is that we get stringers running past all the previous colors. Now as we look at this from the front, the yellow will be in the front, the light orange will be behind, the dark orange will be right behind that. And because it's spinning, our circles are round. I don't have to use a protractor or a template, it's just, it's round because it has no choice but to be round. So anyway, let that set for a few minutes. It appears to be thicker, and I have a feeling that the thicker paint is going to be the better paint for this for this uh, stunt. So anyway, let that set. We'll go get the next color ready. All right, here we are, ready to go with our next color. Uh, I was going to do two more colors, but I got a feeling this is going to be the last one. This is uh, a burgundy. It's a nice color. So, let's get this going faster or slower.
terrible way to break this thing. Okay. Well, I think that's going to do it for now. I want to paint a little something inside. And so we got our fingers of color running all the way off the edge. That's primarily what I wanted. So this is our first experiment. I think we're going to be operating at uh, various speeds. I don't think it's going to be a one speed does everything. That wasn't coming out far enough, so I sped it up, and then all of a sudden, whoop, we got what I wanted most. We got all that. Because this big, thick band of color, that's not what I want. It's not what I wanted. I wanted something closer to this, right here, right here. I didn't want the big thick, but the paint's a little thicker, so it didn't run as much. It just spread out, and then we had to zip it up quickly to get these stringers. But that's what it is. That's what we got right now. This is experiment number one. And I can't wait to see it from the other side. Okay, we've got a second piece of glass screwed down. Got the vinyl on it. We're going to start it up. And this time we're going to pour some white on there. And see what that looks like. spinning so fast I can't tell at all what it looks like. That looks kind of interesting, doesn't it? Yeah, check that out. I don't know if you can see it with the light the way it is, but that looks interesting. And uh, we put a black background on that, and that'll really show up. It almost looks like broken tempered glass, which is interesting. But uh, we'll see what we turn this into. But I like it. Alright, I just put the first coat of black paint on the back of the one we did with the white paint. And I'm going to put a second coat on now. And this will be dry to the touch in about 30 minutes and will be dry enough to clean and work on in about an hour. But it will be hard as a rock by tomorrow. That ought to be enough for that. And so, uh, let's come over here for a moment. Here's the other one. Now, what I did was I painted a little cross. Let's look at it from the front. So I painted a little cross here, and then I'm going to 
take an old toothbrush and some white paint, you go create a star field, as in outer space. And then we'll paint the whole back of it black. And so basically we'll have the cross floating in space, stars, and whatever this is. The explosion, I thought, well, maybe it's creation, the Big Bang, or, or maybe it's just energy force, or whatever the, whatever you want to see when you look at it. So anyway, and it's going to look really cool. So we'll just let all this dry overnight, and we'll clean it up. Uh, and I'll probably be back to do the star field later tonight. So maybe we still have that to do on this. Okay, well that's it for now. See you in a minute. All right, well, I just pulled the vinyl off the face of the glass. And uh, you can see here I painted a little cross on there. Then I just flicked some white paint to create a star field. And then uh, painted it black on the back just like I did the other one. Now the other one, I just think, turned out totally cool. I mean, it's just two colors, black and white. And, I mean, it looks like a bullet hole or something. It's just really cool. So, anyway, this is very indicative of the uh, spin art that uh, I used to do when the carnival came to town. Remember those days, traveling carnivals? Yeah, we don't see a lot of that. And this piece can be hung vertically or horizontally uh, both would work uh, so I can't wait to do some more of these but I have to get some more glass in I only ordered these two pieces they're 14 by 18 inches 3 quarter inch thick with polished edges and tempered so uh, these are some very durable pieces of glass and uh, so let me know what you think. Now we still have to put backs on these so they can be hung. And, uh, and we'll go through that together. And, uh, but for right now, this is what the paint looks like. All right. Now, one thing I've got to do is I've got to clean up these edges. There's paint on the very edge. So we need to clean that off, and that'll that'll even make the edge look kind of more attractive when it's uh, when you can see through the very edges. So anyway, let's see here. How am I going to do this? I guess we'll put them on these blocks. Okay, I need a brand new razor blade. So anyway. Got some steel wool here. Got a brand new razor blade. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go along this chamfer and just try to clean everything off. It's pretty easy to do, and if you're careful, you won't mess up the painted area you don't want to mess up. that edge and then take the steel wool and just go over it you don't have to work too hard fortunately this stuff is durable enough to take a little bit of sanding with the steel wool so you can just keep going until it's clean now let's see if we can get that on camera where you can actually see the edge. It's prettier. It comes into focus. It's, a, it's just a tighter, cleaner, whereas when it's still got the paint on it, it's kind of dull. But here we get to see that little miter, that little chamfer, and uh, the reflection of it. It just makes it look more like glass. So anyway, we'll just do that to all four sides. 
Doesn't take long, just have to be careful. You don't want to slip up onto the area and scratch your paint off. Then you got to get into touching up, and, and sometimes the touch up is kind of easy, and other times touch up is darn difficult. Alrighty, now I don't think the camera's going to show you this, but that really makes it look a whole lot tighter and finished. Oh, there's a big chunk of white paint. Come over here. So, this really isn't a lot of work. I mean, I could do a hundred of these a week. Although, I don't know if I could sell a hundred of them a week, so I don't think I'm going to go there. But, you need to find a paint that sticks to glass again. No paint really sticks to glass unless it's fired on. So you have to experiment and see what seems to work the best. I have experimented with sign paints. Uh, most spray can stuff doesn't work. However, this black seems to be holding pretty good. Okay. Well, that's it. And the next thing, we'll put the backing on, uh, which is just going to be a quarter inch piece of plywood. It's cut smaller. We'll paint it or finish it out in some way, and then it'll have a hole in it where a little, uh, a little toothy bar, I don't know what those are called, pitcher hangers, uh, will, will be attached and something for the nail to catch on to. You know, like a pretty typical picture hanging situation. Okay, let's blade and steel wool this one. Okay. Okay, again, I'm not sure if the camera can register all that for you, but let's try to see what the edges look like now that they're cleaned off. See, even from the back, you can kind of look into it and get a reflection of the color. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, there they are waiting to have their backing put on. Go ahead and wipe that off. Actually, we've got a lot of something on this glass. So I'm going to use the glass cleaner and steel wool and just go over it real quick. Just go over the whole thing. what that was. Overspray of paint or just something on the table that it picked up. See? That's it. Clean and ready to go. Well okay, I forgot to videotape this but we cut the plywood, the quarter inch plywood, and uh, drilled a hole in it and put the little hanger device on it. We'll get a close-up of that in a second. And then I just stuck the plywood to the uh, painted glass with a two-way transparent foam tape. So here we are hanging on the wall and uh, uh, the camera is seeing the wall as a funky color. The walls are gray but not the color we're seeing here. 
But uh, I think this piece looks really neat. I think it turned out really great. I want to do a whole series on these. Just different colors doing the exact same thing. Uh, then here's uh, the other piece. And uh, uh, I, I'm a little disappointed that I made that red stripe as thick as I did. But other than that, it's a fun piece. And I had fun doing it and learning from it. Hope you like it. Mr. Morrison told me that I should tell you guys to subscribe already. So do it, would you? Is that it, Mr. Morrison? Is that what you wanted? Good.